Now let's go over and speak with uh, our next newsmaker guest who is standing by, Gerald Solante. And many of you already know Gerald. He is, he is a very powerful and impassioned voice going up against the official uh, economists and the official experts. And today I've asked him to take, um, to take an issue not against uh, uh, Krugman, uh, the Nobel Prize winning columnist for the New York Times, but rather the fact that two years and two months ago on this program, we spent one hour, Gerald Zalante and myself, discussing the likely outcome of bailouts, austerity programs, uh, the politics of going on in the Eurozone, the 27 nations of the Eurozone, the 17 user currency. And we laid out, and since that time, we've done 14 additional programs in detail, not general statements. And we predicted that Greece would fall, that Greece would go off the earth, that Greece would uh, finally get a government in there, that the people would throw out the old people who were the political hacks, and that you would see a form of, a uh, form similar to Iceland, where they're just saying, no, we're not going to pay you. We're going to rebuild our own economy. We're going to keep this money here. We're going to learn some lessons about responsible governance and responsible citizenry, but we're not going to allow you to use us forever in debt peonage. Gerald Salante said that on this show, but the world didn't hear that, and the New York Times didn't print it. But today, when Paul Krugman says, ooh, really bad things are happening in uh, Greece, and a po- quote, apocalypse fairly, fairly soon, Gerald Salante, nice to have you with us. Oh, it's always great being on with you. Thank you, Gary. Uh, I don't want to include any of my guests in in supporting or challenging anything I said before, but I just want you, uh, the people to know any conversation I have with Les Leopold. With Les Leopold, we're starting fresh with this one. Let's take a look. I want you to take a look uninterrupted of what you see Krugman saying. Apocalypse fairly soon. Wall Street saying, we hope not. All the banks and our uh, government saying they better not. And then the reality of what you're likely to see happen in Greece. And then Ireland, Spain, Italy, Portugal, Slovakia. Your turn. Well, in reading Krugman's piece, he begins with, Suddenly, it has become easy to see how the euro, that grand flawed experiment in monetary union without political union could come apart at the seams. Suddenly? Suddenly for who? For a blind person to see it? As you pointed out, we've been saying this for years. We said the Eurozone was going to collapse when it began. And this piece by Krugman, only they can get away with it. It's the same club. They're wrong time after time after time, and yet they come out and make a statement, and everybody listens. Apocalypse fairly soon? No, Junior. Apocalypse now. If you're living in Spain, and you're one of the 25% plus that are unemployed, if you're one of the 50% plus young adult unemployed, it's apocalypse now. If you live in Greece, if you live in Portugal, if you live in Italy, Ireland, if you live in Lithuania, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, if you live in any part of the world that's going through this, it's apocalypse now. And by the time they see it coming, it's too late. And this thing is just, I mean, the the language is kitty crap. You know, and and he talks about things, you know, that we have to hope for this and hope for that. Yeah, how about hope and change? And the only thing that he's right about, when he says Europe answer has been austerity, savage spending cuts in an attempt to reassure bond markets. Yet, as any sensible economist could have told you, and not him included, and these cuts deepened the depression in Europe's troubled economies, which both further undermined investor confidence and led to growing political instability. Let's take that first word. Undermine investor confidence. Gary, what's an investor? I'll tell you what an investor is. It's a gambler. Investor. I'm tired of this investor crap. These are gamblers. They're money junkies. They can't kick the habit. It's like a freak going to Atlantic City or, or Las Vegas or a lotto junkie playing and thinking they're going to win. But there's one big difference here. 
when the money junkies like Jamie Diamond or Lloyd, I'm doing God's worth blank fine, when they lose, we pay. And it's like you mentioned, you know, about J.P. Morgan with this $2 billion. It's chump change. J.P. Morgan's investment unit, the same one, has $100 billion of risky bonds. Again, not risky bonds. That's the wrong language. That's white shoe boy language. It's bad bets. The whole thing is coming apart at the seams. And as we said in the spring 2011 Trends Journal, the first great war of the 21st century has begun. You see them out in the streets. A hundred thousand people in the tiny Czech Republic protesting corruption in the government. Did it make the news? No. Last week, hundreds of thousands taken to the streets in Spain. Hey, uh, what do you think about gay marriage? Let's talk about that until uh, we can't talk about it anymore. That didn't make the news. Every day there are suicides in Italy and Greece and all these countries at record levels. Robberies. It's falling apart. It's war. It's class warfare. And this is what's going on. There is no saving the European Union. We said it when it began. It began when it was the beginning of globalization. You and I and those old enough to remember in the 1970s and 80s and early 90s, it was up, up, up until 19, what, 1991, there was no Russia. What, when, the, when the Berlin World Fall, 89, everything was locked behind the Iron Curtain. There was no globalization. China? Everybody thought of China, they thought of Mao and rickshaws. There was no China. India? Forget India. The only thing people knew about India was Gandhi. Brazil? What, what brick nations? Who cared? Didn't exist. In other words, they created globalization so the money junkies could consolidate it all and make it easy with the Eurozone. And we said that at this high point of globalization, yeah, it looks fine. But as soon as it starts breaking down, the whole thing will break apart with it. And now, and now, the frauds out there, the so-called economists, who were saying that it would be a disaster if the Greeks fell out of the Eurozone, you know what they're chatting now? Oh, it won't be that bad. Greece is only 2% of the, Euro, of the, the GDP of the, the European Monetary Union. We're looking at governments failing all over that monetary union. 17 monetary union members, 12 governments have gone out. 12 of them. And you're going to see more of it. And, they're, and by the way, they're bastardizing the language. For example, with the Spanish, the new government in the left, they call it the radical left. No, that radical's really not the right term for it. It's a non-traditional. So, but they use the language so that it makes it seem far left groups. Far left groups? How about, how about criminal operations calling themselves the center? So that's what's going on in a nutshell. I have one last uh, quick question for you. Looking forward, I'm concerned about the following, and take any piece of this concern and address it, if you would, please. I'm concerned that, uh, that at some point there's a high probability after Obama gets elected, if he does, that uh, Israel will attack uh, Iran. If that happens... I see China doing something that I believe it has wanted to do for a long time, that is getting rid of a lot of the dollars, which they've already been doing by these 17 phantom cities with 65 million empty housing units there, and all these factories and lands they're renting, leasing, and buying, uh, by getting low enough that they could stop giving us dollars and justify doing that because of their support for Iran, Russia's support for Iran, India's support for Iran, and that would immediately cause the dollar to become worth a whole lot less, and people would be in our country smacked down by very high gas prices, uh, hyperinflation on everything. That's not even being discussed anywhere today, and yet our media, without exception, is rallying around 
uh, Israel, its right to self-determination, its right to protect itself, and the politicians there, uh, along with their APAC friends. And behind all this is China. And China's in a bubble economy now with this housing, and it's deflating, and they're going to take a big, hard landing on this, but they can survive that. But I think at some point, they're going to want to be the number one power in the world economically. And if they drop the dollar as the reserve currency and start trading amongst themselves, that'll absolutely happen. Whether it's official or unofficial, by fiat, it will happen in America. We'll get hit broadsided. People will think that they're in the Great Depression times five. Your thoughts? Well, on Iran, we may not have to wait until after Obama is reelected. And by the way, we think he will. And of course, I'm a political atheist. I don't believe in any of this stuff. So it's not a it's not a, a forecast that we're making because we want it to happen. And it's a lesser of two evils, and doesn't mean anything to us. Whoever gets in there, but just pick up today's paper in the New York Times. U.S. envoy to Israel says nation is ready on Iran. The American ambassador to Israel said this week that not only was America willing to use military force to stop Iran from developing nuclear weapons, but that preparations had already been made for a possible attack. The United States and Europe has already declared war on Iran by imposing these draconian embargoes and on, on their oil. It's an act of war. It's a reverse of what the United States did to Japan prior to World War II by cutting them out of the markets to get natural resources. Now they're cutting Iran out of the market to sell their resources. On the China issue, as goes the U.S., so goes China. And so goes Europe, as goes China. For example, when you look at who China exports the most to, it's the United States Gerald, hold one second. Uh, I just realized we're at the end of this hour. However, here's what I'd like to do. Our next program is starting. I would like to have Michael G., our engineer, call you back so that you can be heard on all the land-based stations around the United States that carry this program, which are a lot. And I had one more question that I think is essential to the people in this audience. So if you could hang up, we'll call you right back. I just want to say goodbye to our audience. I have to go do another program now, but thank you very much for listening.